very much for coming. Um, I'd like to say, to start with, a special welcome to um, other uh, British Council offices, which um, are viewing this through a live stream. Uh, so we should have audiences in Pune, Ahmedabad, Hyderabad, Chennai, Delhi, and a very special welcome to our newest British Council office, which is in Chandigarh. Um, this is the second in the British Council series of talks aimed at uh, ELT professionals working in India. Um, today it is our pleasure to present Russell Stannard. He is the Principal Teaching Fellow for the Master's Programme in ELT at Warwick University in the UK. Um, for the last 11 years, the British Council has awarded the English Language Teaching Innovation Award, known as the Eltons for short. Um, the Eltons, which are sponsored by Cambridge, are the only international awards that recognise and celebrate innovation in the field of English language teaching. Um, Russell Stannard won the award for innovation in technology in 2010 for his um, website, which is teachertrainingvideos.com, which he will tell you some more about. Um, Russell's presentation today looks at some of the most popular and practical tools from his website, which uh, teachers can use to enhance their English language teaching. At the end of the presentation, um, we'd really like to hear your questions, not only from the audience here in Mumbai, but also from our audiences across India. So there are two ways that you can communicate with us. Uh, number one, if you are Twitter savvy, you can uh, use the hashtag, which you can see on the screen here. Can you see? Um, which is hashtag TLTools. So you can send your questions uh, on Twitter using this hashtag. Or if you're in a British Council office, you can find a member of staff um, and they will communicate your questions to me. Um, so I hope you all enjoy the presentation and I look forward to your questions at the end. Thank you very much. I pass this to you. Yeah, we're going to change. Right? Okay, <laughs> change over the microphones, okay? It's exciting, no? Oh, can't get it out. Right. Hi, my name's uh, Russell Stannard. Um, first of all, I just want to say what an honour it is for me to come to India. It's my first time. I was, re I was so excited that I left the hotel and left my computer in the hotel this morning. I had to go back again because my head is everywhere. I've waited to come to India for many years. I've been invited to India many years because actually my best friend is Indian. His name is Savraj Matharu and we've wor worked together on many projects. And there he is, my main man. This is a project that we worked on together and there's Savraj there. So he's my closest friend and I've been a very tight member of his family. I was his best man at his wedding. Uh, in England, he lives in uh, the northwest of London, where there's a huge Indian community. But he lives in South Hall. Some of you probably even know South Hall. Well, I live very near to South Hall. I live in Harrow. 
So it's, all, it's very strange me being in India because I thought it would feel so different, but of course it's actually very similar to that part of the world. It was a huge, great Indian community. And um, so it's really, really special for me to come. And Savraj has invited me many times, but it's never worked out that um, I could actually come over with him. So this is my first visit and really big thank you to the British Council for inviting me. Right, today's talk. Okay. I'm going to show you three technologies that I think are absolutely fantastic. And I'm going to make this talk really practical. I'm going to show you real examples of what my students have done and what you can do with these tools. And I promise you, I've been talking to some of you in the audience, I've got a good idea what you're interested in, and I'm sure that at least one of the three tools that I'm going to show you today will be of interest to everybody in the room. These are three tools that are incredibly popular. That is that teachers all around the world are using them. So the three tools that I'm going to present, one is called My Brain Shark, crazy name. The second one is Jing, which is probably, in my opinion, the best piece of technology in education ever, and is free. And the last one is called Present Me, which is a tool which I began using this year. They're all slightly different, and they can all do many, many things. And as I said, I'm going to try my best to make this as practical as possible. So I teach, just very quickly who I am, I teach at the University of Warwick. I teach technology in language teaching. That's my expertise. But I also like the other side of teaching, that is teaching with minimum resources. I kind of live in, in two worlds, using lots of technology or using no technology at all and just using flashcards, books and, and photocopies. So really, the, t the two opposites are what I'm really interested in. And I run a website called teachertrainingvideos.com. It's completely free. And the idea of that website is to help teachers to use technology. And so what I do on that website is I provide the teachers with free videos that show them how to use different technologies. If you're a teacher and you'd like to start a blog with your class, or you'd like to do a podcast with your class, or you'd like to use Jing with your class, you can go to my website, you can watch the video which shows you exactly how to do it. So the, the website is free. I'm going to show you an example just so that you can see how useful the website is. So if I just give an example here. So this is teachertrainingvideos.com and all of these are links to videos that demonstrate different tools that you might be interested in using in language teaching or in, in, in fact in general education, not just for languages. And if you click on any of the videos, what you see is something like this. So this is the one for blogger. Uh, the, same thing, um, the same thing will happen. It will take you so you're looking at my computer screen and I'm explaining you how to use Lucky blogger, to for example. A Google account, then you just simply need to sign in. And once you've done that, then you will uh, be taken to the uh, opening page for Blogger. So I've just signed in and here we are on the opening page, uh, Russell Stannard's blog. So the idea is that if you're a teacher and you want to start to use technology, you can go, you can watch the videos, the videos are free, and I take you step by step right through how to use these different technologies. This website's become very, very popular, has about a thousand visitors every day. So please make use of it, it's free, and it's there really to just to get more and more teachers introducing technology into their classes. And the three most popular videos are the ones I'm going to show you today. Jing, My Brain Shark, Present Me, are three of the most popular videos on that website. Jing 
has been viewed more than 100,000 times. 100,000 teachers around the world have looked at my videos on how to use Jing. So you can see how popular the tool is. Right, let's get started and just come back to the presentation. So it's a little bit about me. That's the website. And we're going to start with a tool called My Brain Shark. And I'm going to explain why My Brain Shark is so interesting. My Brain Shark is a free tool. You just sign up, and the you, all the students, can upload PowerPoint, a Word file, a picture, or pictures, or a video, and then add their voice to it. So if we want to get our students to do speaking practice, we can get our students to go to My Brain Shark. They can upload a picture, or upload a PowerPoint presentation, or upload a Word document, and then add their voice. My Brain Shark squashes them together and makes a link. So if it's the student, the student can go home, do the recordings, practice their English, and send the link to the teacher. Or, if you're a teacher and you want to send some material to your students, you can go on My Brain Shark, upload a presentation, and then you can simply add your voice, compress it together, everything is automatic, it's very easy to use, and then send the recording. Now, I'm going to give you an example of how this is being used. So, let me explain my situation. I've got lots of students who are developing their English for English for academic purposes. And so, what I try to do with them is that... Sorry. Is that, is that better? Can I get back to dancing now? Yeah, yeah good, right. Okay. So, what I try to do, what, what, how I use the tool, and it's not the only way, how I use the tool is that students who are studying English for academic purposes, they can create a PowerPoint slide, upload it onto my brain shark, add their voice, and then send me the link. I can click on the link listen to them recording, and then give them some feedback. So it's really good for oral skills. It's really good for developing their oral skills. Now, it doesn't have to be high level. The students can upload a PowerPoint presentation, but they can also upload just one picture. If it's low level, and they just to describe a simple picture. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you an example of this tool first, and then I'm going to sh come back and show you how my brain shark works. Let me just show you an example. This is a real example from a student of mine. Let me just check if, I can, if I'm logged in. One second. Okay, so this is a student. Um, the, the, the volume's not very good on this, I'm sorry, but this is a student. Her name is Michelle. She was studying with me English for academic purposes. She knocked on my door and said, Russell, Russell, tomorrow I'm doing a presentation on internet security in English. I'm so scared. Can you listen to my presentation? I said, I haven't got time. Go to my brain shark, upload your presentation, add your voice, send me the link, and I will listen to it and give you some feedback. And that was the very first time that I used this technology. Now, the recording level is a bit low, I'm sorry, but you can just see exactly what she sent to me. I got the link, I clicked on the link, and this is what I listened to. Part is the introduction of the security and policy. 
The second part is the solution to these problems. Okay, let's move on to, okay, move on to my presentation. Part one. Okay, let me ask you a question first. So you imagine that. Imagine me, you know, suddenly getting a recording sent to me of my students speaking English. And I can listen to that, take some notes, and send them back my feedback. Now, I can actually send the feedback directly. I can just write underneath here, if I want, just write some comments and then send them directly to my, to my student. Now, this tool, in this example, you can notice that it's a PowerPoint presentation. It goes from page one to page two automatically. I don't do anything. But it could just be that the student uploads one picture and adds their voice and then sends the link to me. Or if you're getting the students to work, for example, peer review, perhaps one student sends a link to the other student. This tool is free. And also, the students can take that recording and put it, embed it, into a blog or into a website. They can also take the recording and embed it into their blog or into their website or into Moodle if they have a virtual learning environment. It's completely free and the students can do recordings of up to 15 minutes long. Now, I'm using this tool a lot. Some of my teachers have done it the other way. They are making presentations that they send to the students. It could be used for distance learning or for blended learning. It has a lot of potential. What I'm particularly impressed with with this tool is that it compresses the file very small. We haven't got a fast internet connection here. We're using a dongle, but it's okay. And that's one of the things, because often, and the same thing in England, you have fast internet connections, some places you have slow internet connections. But generally, the technology here works very well. It's one of the most reliable technologies I've ever used in terms of the internet. We, we're making enormous use of this particular tool. Students at the beginning of a course, I get them to make a PowerPoint presentation and talk about themselves, talk about their lives, talk about their families, their interests, and do that in my brain shark and then send the link to me. Now I'm going to show you a quick video, just show you how easy that tool is to use. It's free, you sign up, you have an account. I've got pages and pages of examples now of students working. Let me just come back to my presentation. Of all the websites I found in 2011, I think this was my favourite. It's called My Brain Shark, and it allows you to upload a PowerPoint presentation or a Word document or a PDF document or a picture or a video and just add your voice to it and then you can share it on the internet and again you can send it as an email. Now I'm just going to quickly log on and show you how to do this. It's slightly more difficult than mail view and bottom but it's still a very very simple tool to use. So I've just logged in. It's free. The website's free when you sign up. Uh, you can add 15 minute videos. Now just to give you a quick example, if I was to uh, how to upload uh, a video so let's, or a, a PowerPoint, just click on upload content and what I'll do is for this example I'm going to use PowerPoint but you can upload video, you can upload a picture, you can upload um, a document as well. So I'm going to choose uh, add voice to a PowerPoint. So I'm going to click on this one here and what will happen is, is that it now will allow me to um, so if I just click, sorry there, click on there, and I'm just going to grab a PowerPoint uh, presentation that I want to use. Now, I think if I remember rightly, I go to my talks. I've got uh, some PowerPoint presentations here, and I'll grab this this one here. Click on open, and now all I need to do is wait while it is uploaded. Now, I don't need to put in any additional information. If I want to add a description, or I want to add categories or tags. I can do. This just helps it, it makes it easier to find content. But all I need to actually wait, do is just wait for the uh, actual file to be uploaded. So I'll just uh, wait for a couple of seconds and then we'll come back to the video. Okay, once it's all done, it will say that your file has been converted and now I'm ready to add my voice. Click on the next button. And I choose this one here because I'm going to use my 
my microphone to add my voice to the PowerPoint presentation. So I click here on microphone and it's just going to tell you that you need to connect as always with these things. You always need to connect your um, browser to the, uh, the flash player to connect to your uh, camera and your microphone. So just here, just say continue and it's just warning that you, that you need to do that. And now just wait and just say allow and it's ready. Now I can start to um, add my voice to the uh, recording. Now I'm going to start with the first page. I can jump to any page of the PowerPoint, but I'll just do the first one. And so imagine now that I'm a student and I want to add my voice. Um, then I just simply click on the record button here. Hello, my name's Russell, and today, Russell, and today um, I'm going to talk about uh, something called feedback with uh, screen capture, which is uh, one of the uh, areas that I've been doing a lot of research on at the University of Warwick, where I work. Now, once I've done my recording, if I'm happy with it, I can click on save. If I'm not happy, I can just click on retry and do it. If I want to preview it, I can click here, and it will just quickly play it back, and I can just listen. Hello, my name is Russell, and today um, I'm going to talk about uh, something. So if I'm happy now with that, I'm going to click on save, and it automatically goes to the next screen. Again, click on the, the record button. So in my presentation today, so today first I'm going to talk a little bit about myself and my work and then afterwards I'm going to take you through using screen capture and explain some of the experiments that I've done, blah 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 blah, blah, blah. again save it. Now I won't do any more, you can obviously go on, you'll see again now that we've saved 15 seconds and 10 seconds of audio. We don't have to uh, add audio to every single slide, once we finish we can just click here and it will put together the audio that we've just created and the slides and it is now ready to play back now and there it is and if we want to now we can click and listen it will just take a couple of seconds Hello, my name is Russell, and, is Russell, and today um, I'm going to talk about, uh, so you can see how easy the students can add their voice to a PowerPoint presentation. Don't forget you could do the same with a picture, or the same with a video, or the same with a Word document. Now what we can do afterwards just is we can share it. So if you're the student and you want to send, send it to your teacher, just one thing to remember, you need have to make the presentation active by clicking on this button here. That's very important because you, when you make it active, that means that you're allowing uh, the presentation to be shared by other um, users. And now I can simply, as a student, share that with my teacher. I just click on the share button and I just put the email address of the person I'm going to send it to. So if it's been sent to my teacher and... Okay, so you can see just how easy that is. The students can upload a PowerPoint presentation. They can add their voice. They do it slide by slide or picture by picture. You can do it with Word or PDF or PowerPoint. And then they can share it. They can share it and I will receive an email. And when I click on the email, I can play back the recording. So I can get my students and they, they don't have to work on their own. They could be working in pairs. They could be working in groups, doing a recording together. If you've got big classes, maybe it's not possible to get one recording from every student. But maybe you've got two or three students working together. Maybe they're doing an interview. Maybe they're doing a group work activity. Okay? And they record that activity and then they send it to you. You can listen to their recording and give them some feedback on their oral skills. So this is particularly interesting for developing oral skills or if you're a teacher and you want to produce content for a distance learning course, teacher training material, etc. Now I'm going to show you one last example before I go on to another tool. Recently what I've been doing is, remember my job is to teach teachers to use technology and often I do lessons where the teachers, my teachers, are using technology and afterwards I get them to reflect what did they think of using the technology, did they practice their English a lot, was it interesting, how would they change the activity. This tool works really well, so I can be doing a lesson with my students and then give them some questions, they go home, upload the questions onto PowerPoint or into, into my brain shock add their voice and then again send me the link. 
I can listen to their reflections. Now, I'm particularly interested in the area of reflection because I like reflection as an idea. Students reflecting on their lessons, teachers reflecting on their teacher practice. But often, I find that if they do it written, they don't do it very well. I actually like the idea of the reflections being oral. Now, you can't do that with very low students, of course, but with higher level students, you can get them to do their reflections in English, or with teachers particularly. So this is a teacher who's done a lesson with me done, and, and is now reflecting on the lesson on what they learnt. And this is a really interesting example of how my brain chart can be used. I'm just going to play a little bit of it before I move on to the next tool. Let me just close that one down. Oh, time out, God. Ah, I think it was just about to time out because I've had it open for so long. Um, let me just check, see if I can get it working. Okay, so this student's name is Cecilia. Well, she's a teacher. She's doing a master's degree course with me. She's a, an experienced teacher. She's done a lesson with me. And in that lesson, we were using technology. Now she's gone home, I've given her some questions, and she is going to answer her questions using Woolwisher, and she sent me this link. I'm just going to play it to you now. So she starts the questions, first question I gave her. Okay, so she's describing what happened in her group. How did her group work together? Now, in the past, I would do that as a questionnaire. I would give them questions. Did you like working in the group? Did you practice your English a lot? Did you interact with the other students in your group? How did you organise yourself? Those were the questions that I asked. And I find that when I do that, I don't get a lot of information back. When I do it orally, it's very different. I got back an enormous amount of information from Cecilia about her experience of working in a group. So I see that tools like My Brain Shark can be used in many different ways. They can be used for getting the students to do oral work. They can be used for the students to do reflection. They can be used for teacher trainers, the trainees, to do reflection. They can be used for teachers who want to provide content on distance learning or blended learning. You can do recordings of up to 15 minutes. Now, my brain shark at the moment is the second most popular tool on my website. When I discovered my brain shark, immediately I had literally hundreds of people emailing me saying, Russell, this is fantastic. This is what I was looking for. I want to get my students speaking. And now I can get them doing the speaking at home. This is one of the powerful things. We're not asking the students necessarily to do the speaking activities in the class now. We might get them to practice in the class, but we actually get them to do the recordings at home. And that is really, really important. So that's the first tool I'm showing you today. It's called My Brain Shark. And if you go to my website, you can watch those videos. So if you forget anything today, just go to the website, watch those videos, and it will remind you how to use My Brain Shark. OK, we're going to come on now to what is undoubtedly, in my opinion, the best piece of technology that I've ever used. I'm going to give you a, a quick talk about it and then show you lots of examples of how I use this tool. OK, Jing is a tool that allows you to record the screen of your computer. It's a free technology that when I click on it, 
everything that I do and everything that I say on the screen is recorded. And that is how I do my website. If you remember, I showed you my videos at the beginning, teachertrainingvideos.com. I record myself using my computer. Jing allows you to literally click a button and record the screen of your computer as a video. You can then share that recording. Now, just think for a minute. I saw that technology for the first time in 2000. I saw a screen capture software. And I thought to myself, wow, I can record the screen of my computer. So, if my student sends me their homework, I can open it onto my screen, turn on the screen capture software, and record myself correcting my student's homework, and then I send it to them. So I could make a video where the student could listen and watch as I correct their work. And that's actually what I did. I had a student in 2006 who was doing a distance course with me. They sent me their essay. I opened it onto my computer screen. I clicked on the button and I simply recorded myself correcting the student's work and I sent them the video. And almost immediately, the student got back to me and said, Russell, this, this is incredible. I, I can hear you. I can, I can see everything you're doing on the screen. I can see my work. And so I began to do a series of experiments using this screen capture software. Now, I'm going to play you an example just so you can see exactly how this would work. So let me just quickly show you an example. These are real examples from work that I'm doing at Warwick University. This student, I'm going to show you now, she has written, or I think it's he actually, he has written an essay about bl using blogging. And the student sent me the essay, I opened the essay onto my screen, I marked the important things, then I turned on the screen capture, recorded myself correcting the student's work, and sent them the video. I'm just going to show you how that would be in reality. Okay, so imagine getting your feedback like that. Imagine receiving that. Imagine your teacher going through your grammar and explaining the mistakes that you've made. This is both visual and oral. The student, for the students, it means you can provide a lot more feedback in quite a short period of time. Because to try to write as fast as I'm speaking would be almost impossible. In fact, I'm using about 150 words a minute. So if I do a five minute video, I'm giving 750 words of feedback and the visual information to my students. Now I'm gonna show you one more example and then I'm gonna show you how easy, and that's the really important thing, how easy this technology is. Now, some of my students, when they do the course with me in technology, they have to do a blog, they have to keep a blog. And it's really hard to give students feedback on their blog because you can't see it. But with this idea, I can open the student's blog, I can turn on the screen capture recording, I can record myself correcting the student's blog and then send them the video. So let me just show you an example of how we can use it to give feedback on a blog.
Sorry, the sound is not really loud. Okay, so I'm, I'm making, I'm opening my students' work onto my screen. I turn on the screen capture software, I make the recording, and I send her the video. She gets a recording of me correcting her work. Now, we're not limited only to the examples that I did there. Imagine, for example, you were teaching a class, and a lot of students were making the same mistake. You could open up Microsoft Word, write a few grammar rules, turn on the screen capture and do a mini grammar lesson explaining to them, look, you're making a mistake here, everybody. Make one video, send it to the whole class. So the whole class gets feedback on that grammar point. You could use it for vocabulary. Maybe you notice that in the lesson that you did today, seven or eight of the students or 10, 15 of the students are making similar mistakes. You could record yourself saying the words and then send that recording to the students. I'm going to show you how easy that would be to do. Let me just show you. The tool that I'm talking about, the one that I'm going to show you, is a tool called Jing. Jing is free. It doesn't cost anything at all. There are other tools, but I really like Jing because it works very well. It's very reliable, and it's very, very easy to use. Let me just show you how easy it is to use Jing and think a little bit about how you could use it in your classes because it's got so many possibilities. Let me show you. So, if I just close all this down a minute, here is Jing, it's at the top of my screen. I literally, I can just mark out an area I want to record. So I'm recording this area. I click Capture Video, and now it starts to record and everything I do, and if I open up something, it doesn't make any difference. Jing will still record. It just records that area of the screen. And if I mark anything on the screen, then also that would come out as well. And if I just click here, stop it, and play that back. And everything I do, and if I open up something, it doesn't make any difference. Jing will still record. It just records that area of the screen. And if I mark anything on the screen, then also that would come out as well. If I just click here. So let's take an example. Let's imagine that I've taught you English today and there were some problems in your lesson with the, with the pronunciation of some of the words. I could go home, go on my computer, simply write out the words that you are having problems with and then record myself giving you some feedback. Let me just try and show you an example. So I can go, let's imagine, I go onto, onto here, and so I'm going to write vocabulary, and I'm just going to write a few words. So we'll put accommodation, and we'll put um, interesting, and then we'll put um, profile, and then we'll put... Um, package. So let's imagine that these were the words that I noticed in today's lesson that you had problems with. So I go home, I put those into a word, into word, and now I'm just going to make that bigger so it's nice and clear. So, sorry. Uh, hang on, what did I do there? I want to go back to, that's it. So I'm going to open up Jing. I just mark the area that I want to do the video. Click on the button. And I'm just going to get, do the feedback. OK, just want to go through some of today's lesson. First one, accommodation. Accommodation. The stress is on the fourth syllable. Next word, interesting. Interesting. The stress is on the first syllable. 
The second, next word, profile, profile, the stress is on the first syllable. And the last word, package, package. Now, I could even do a sentence, so I could say, yeah, I'm looking for accommodation in the Mumbai area. So I could actually give an example sentence. I could do anything. I then stop it, and the recording is almost immediate. Okay, just want to go through some of today's lesson. First one, accommodation, accommodation. The stress is on the fourth syllable. Next word, interesting, interesting. The stress is on the first syllable. The second, next word, pro... Now, what I could have done actually even better, let me just go back to the home page, is that it might have been a good idea, first of all, to just accommodation, to actually mark where the stress is. Interesting, and actually just gone through and marked the stress on the words and then done the recording. So, if I come back again, so easy, just click on Jing, mark the area. Now, I'm just going to do a quick recording. Okay. Okay, first word, accommodation, accommodation. Second word, interesting, interesting. Boom. Video is done. I'm going to call this video vocabulary. And maybe you're thinking, well, how are you going to send that to the students? This is the powerful thing. How? I'm going to click this button here. It says share via screencast.com. I'm going to click on that button. Now, if I've got an internet connection, you will see now that that video is being sent. And there it goes. And this is quite a slow connection. We're not using um, anything particularly fast here. We're uploading that video because when you have Jing, you get one place to save your videos. Okay? And what happens is it sends the video up to the Jing server and it sends you back the address the URL, where you can find that video. And to make it easy, it puts it into the clipboard of your computer. So you don't even have to do anything. It's just told me it's ready. And that means now that incredibly, if I was going to send you an email, close, and I'll explain this again. Okay, watch this. Dear student, here, sorry, here is your feedback. Paste. Okay, it was put in my clipboard automatically. I don't do anything. Russell, I send you that email, and if you click on that link, you can play the video. So I can make a video in a few seconds, upload it onto the Jing server, I can't, I've been told not to move too much. I have to stay in the same place. Upload it onto the Jing server. Send back the link to me. And then I just open an email and share that link with all of you. You can click on that and listen to my feedback. Could be a grammar lesson. Could be vocabulary. Could be telling the students what to do for homework. Could be lots of things. Could be explaining the homework to them. There's loads of ways that you could use this tool. Now, let me just do that again, because I want to make it absolutely clear. And remember, you can go to my website and watch me using Jing. If you forget how to use it, you just go to the website. And the most important thing is Jing is free. Okay, these tools, and there are other nice ones, Screencast-O-Matic. Screencast-O-Matic, but I love Jing because I like that you click the button. It uploads the video to America. I think, is, I don't know, is America this way or this way? I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm guessing it's this way. Yeah? So we click on the button, upload the video to America, sends us back to India the URL. We open an email and share it with our students. That easy. Let's just do that again because students, some teachers get a bit confused because it's so easy. So I'm just going to do it one more time. And it is. It is so easy that people get confused. Let me just show you. So a mark here. Click here, mark the area, click this button here, mic on, blah, 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 blah. Do the recording, and then I'm going to give it a name. So we call this Vocabulary 2, or Lesson 2, or whatever you want. And then I click Share via Screencast. I click that button. And you can see now the video is on its way to America. Okay, it's going to take a while. It's a bit slow. If you've got a fast connection, it's really quick. When I do it at university, it's bang. It's straight up. 
but it's not bad, it's not bad. And the smaller you make the video, the quicker it is. If you do a really big video, of course it will take longer. Now what it's gonna do is once it's loaded, it will say ready. And when it's ready, what will happen is it will get, tell you that you know now that the video is in the clipboard. It's been saved into the clipboard. So if I now opened up and said to my students, dear students, mini, let's imagine that I'm doing a mini grammar lesson, mini grammar lesson, paste, Russell. There it is, they've got it. Now you might say, but Russell, what happens to the video after? What about the video you made before that disappeared? No, because Jing, you can go to your history, can go to your history and there are all your recordings and here they are. So I can go back to any recording I made. If I want to click, I can delete the recording. If I don't want to keep it anymore, I can just delete it. Okay, and just delete the recording. If I want to listen to the recording again, I can click here and that is view the recording. So any of the old ones I made, I can just simply click on here and Anyone speak Spanish? Okay, right, so we'll do that in a minute anyway. And that, the only other thing I can do, if I want to get the address again, then I click on this one here, share, and it will send me the address of that video. So if you've got a student and you forgot to send them the video feedback or the grammar lesson from last week, you just click, you click on view, and it will give you again the address, and then you can send that to the students. Is that nice? Yeah, got a lot of potential. This idea created enormous publicity for me. Absolutely enormous publicity. It was in the Times newspaper, the Guardian, the Independent. I did a report for the government. It's grown and grown and grown. I've literally presented that idea to about 20, 25 countries around the world. We call it video feedback or screen capture feedback. And many, many people are doing it. And it's not only useful in language teaching. It could be history, it could be geography, it could be anything that you want to give the students feedback for or you want to present content to them. However, and this is really interesting, I got a lot of feedback from America when I come up with this idea. And the Americans said to me, Russell, this is a really good idea, but you are always using Jing. Jing is free. Give Jing to the students. Get the students to use Jing. You know, I hadn't thought of that. I was so into the idea of feedback, I hadn't realised, of course, the students could use Jing. Let's imagine another situation. Let's imagine, for example, that I've just had a Spanish lesson. And in today's lesson, in the class, we were practising talking about somebody famous. I'm a student. I've done my Spanish lesson. We've done some practice, we've done some vocabulary around describing a famous person. I'm going to go home, so this is my home now, okay? That's America, this is my home, okay? So I'm going to go home, and I've got Jing on my computer, and my homework from my teacher is to talk about someone famous who I admire. So I'm just going to close down, let's just go off and go up to my pictures. So imagine this is my homework. I'm going to find some pictures. Now, I've got some pictures of some people here. And Didier Drogba, I'm a, uh, Didier Drogba is a, a famous footballer who used to play for my football team, Chelsea. He's my hero. And so I'm going to talk about Didier Drogba. Now, I've done my homework in Spanish. I've been studying very hard. And I have to, my teacher has told me, choose one famous person and talk about them. So I opened Jing. I mark the area and I start my recording. Bueno, aquí tenemos una foto de Didier Drogba, es un jugador de Chelsea, bueno, ex jugador de Chelsea, ya juega con un equipo en Turquía, pero para mí un tío muy interesante porque políticamente, bla, 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 bla. I start talking, I do my recording. Now, if I'm not happy, I can do it again. If I am happy, I can just listen. Bueno, aquí tenemos una foto de Didier Drogba, es un jugador de Chelsea, 
And so if I'm happy with my recording, I just simply click on share the screencast. The video will be uploaded, not to my home, no, to America. Okay? Send me back the link and I will share that with my teacher. And my teacher can listen to my Spanish and tell me if my Spanish is good or bad. Suddenly, we could use Jing in so many different ways. So it's not only teacher to student, it's also student to teacher. It could be a grammar lesson. It could be feedback. It could be the student speaking. Maybe, for example, we got a timeline. 1970, 1975, 1980, 1985. The students doing a recording talking about their life in the past. Maybe it's talking about their typical day. Put the time, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and they do a recording. One of the things that I say about this idea is that I do a lot of practice in the class to prepare the students, but tell them to go home and do the recordings at home. Now, it's not always possible. Some of you will be teaching students that haven't got internet connections. You might not be able to do this, but I want to tell you one thing. I had the idea to give feedback to my students with screen capture in 2000. It was six years before I actually did it for the first time because I didn't know how easy the technology was. I was in a presentation, I saw someone using screen capture, I thought, wow, that could be brilliant for feedback. I had the idea for six years. Six years later, in 2006, I did it for the first time. And that might be the case with some of you. You might not be able to go back and do this yet with your students. It might be something that's going to be one, two, three years away. You might be able to do it in some private lessons. You might be able to do it in just one class. But a moment will come when you might think, wow, I'm going to try some of Russell's ideas. I'm going to try to use my brain shock. I'm going to try to use Jing. And I think, you know, that's, keep that in mind. It might not be today, but it might happen. Just like for me, six years I walked around with the idea, wow, screen capture would be fantastic for feedback. Six years later, I realized that technology was so easy. I clicked the button mark the screen, record myself talking, send it to my students. I thought it was difficult to use. So Jing has got really a lot of potential as a tool. And just come back to the presentation a minute. I can jump for a minute, sorry, I've opened it in the middle of it. So Jing can be used, as I said, teacher to student. Quick instructions, going over marking screens, going over questions, mini grammar lessons. But it can also be used the other way. In other words, we can get it for students. Students to show us their favourite website. Students to show pictures of their favourite music band or favourite actor, actress, favourite sportsman. To show pictures of where they visited. They can use it in so many different ways. They could even, if you wanted, talk about a video. If you turn on a video and jing the video and add your commentary. There was a teacher in Brazil that did some experiments where the students played the video of someone scoring a goal in a football match. They had to turn down the sound, jing the video and add their own commentary, for example. So remember, jing just records whatever you do on the screen. It's a fabulous tool. It's got so much potential in teaching. Um, that's number two. Right, the last tool I'm going to use, talk about today, uh, and we're near to finishing, is, is, is a tool that's called Present Me. Now, Present Me, I must say, it's only just started. It, it's been around for a little while, and the technology is getting better and better. But still, this does need quite a fast internet connection. My Brain Shark and Jing are pretty good. If you're careful, you can do recordings on a fairly slow internet connection. But this one, Present Me, does need a good, um, a good internet connection. But it's a very interesting tool because the students or the teacher can upload a PowerPoint presentation or upload a Word file or upload a PDF document 
and then add their webcam. Now this has got a lot of potential, for example, if you're practicing for exams. You can imagine that you get the students to upload the questions on the left hand side and then on the right hand side of the screen the students can be in pairs or in groups doing an interview and that can be recorded and then shared with the students. Now I'm going to show you an example just so you can see. The example I'm going to show you is a student called Jonathan who did a recording, again it's a reflection. You'll see that I sent Jonathan the questions he uploaded the questions into Present Me, and then he added his webcam. So you need a webcam. Obviously, most laptops have a webcam, or you can buy webcams incredibly cheaply these days, but you do need a webcam if you want to use this tool. But the power of this, I think, is particularly for exam practice, for oral exam practice. Students working in twos or threes. They have the questions on the left-hand side, and they're working in twos or threes doing the recording. For example, it could be a job interview scenario. One of the students is, is, doing, is the interviewer, and the other student is the interviewee. And we can get students to practice their oral skills. Of course, the same technology can be used by the teacher. The teacher can upload a PowerPoint presentation with their webcam and then send that to the students as well. So this is an interesting tool. The technology is not as good. It does require a faster internet connection. But let me just show you an example first. Just going to close down a few... OK, you can see Jonathan here. He's one of my students on the master's degree programme. I've sent him the questions I want him to think about, and he is going to do his recording. Um, as I said, this does require a bit of a faster connection. I hope it's going to work. Hi, Russell. This is Jonathan. Now I'm going to talk about my feedback and reflection about what was your activity. The first question is, what type of language processing took place while the activity was taking place? For example, did you speak a lot? Did you read a lot? Um, our task was to recommend some places to visit in Madrid. After realizing what the text was about, my three other group members and I decided to work in pairs. One pair was responsible for museums in Madrid. OK, so you can see exactly what happened here. I've sent Jonathan some questions. He's done a lesson with me, a group work lesson, and I want him to reflect on the lesson. I want him to think about the lesson. I want him to tell me what he learnt. And so he's gone home. I've given him the questions. The questions are on the left, and Jonathan is on the right. Now, if we were working, say, for pra practising, say, for first certificate, or perhaps for even IELTS or for, for, for advanced or PET or KET exam, where we want the students to work. We could have the students, we don't have to have one person on the camera, we could have two or three people on the camera. And the students simply can upload the questions that you can provide or they can make the questions and then they can add their webcam. And it works exactly the same. You can share after. Click the share, send the link to the teacher. The teacher can listen to your recording and give you some feedback on your oral development. Again, this could be the teacher doing a mini lesson, doing a mini presentation that they want to put online. The teacher puts the PowerPoint presentation up and adds their voice. Now, Present Me is really easy. I want to show you how easy it is just to finish so you can actually see how the tool works. I'm just going to show you a quick video that shows you how Present Me works.
Uh, right, first thing I need to do is upload a file, so I'm going to quickly go on and grab a file from my computer, just a simple PowerPoint presentation. So I've chosen one here, I'm just going to click on this one, it's about interactive whiteboards. And now I've just got to wait while that's loaded, and it loads fairly quickly, as long as you, again you've got a fast internet connection, that's very, very important. And now all I need to do, once it's ready, is to record. So I click on this button here, and what happens is, on the left-hand side, you will see the PowerPoint presentation, and on the right-hand side, I can add my webcam. I can add my webcam. So I'm going to just, again, as usual, always have to use Flash with these things. They all require Flash. There I am on the screen now, and I can start to record. So I'm just going to click on this button here, and it will allow me to start my record. Okay, so you can see how easy it is to do. It breaks the PowerPoint presentation down, so you can click on the first slide, add your voice, click on the second slide, add your voice. When you finish, click on Save, and then it says Share. Click Share, send the link to the students, or the students send the link to you, or the students send the link to another student for feedback, if you're doing, for example, peer feedback. This tool needs a bit more time. I think that you'll find that slowly they will get the technology better and better, they call it streaming technology, to allow the video to be compressed more and more. My brain shark has really done a good job of compression. This one is getting better. I checked it about two or three years ago and it was very slow. Now it's a lot better. It worked today and we're using just an, a, a dongle here which is not bad at all. So it's really something to look out for because it has particular potential when you want to have someone on the screen, if you think that's important. And for example, for oral practice, for exam practice, it might be that my brain, I'm sorry, that present me is a really interesting tool that we can use in that kind of situation. Okay? So I've presented to you today three tools. Just going to finish. Come back a minute to my presentation. All of these tools do something slightly different. My Brain Shark allows you to add your voice to a PowerPoint. Jing allows you, for example, to provide feedback to your students or to get your students to do speaking activities. And, and Present Me allows you to use a webcam. All of these tools have potential both for the student to use and for the teacher to use. And all of these tools, you can take the recording and put it into a blog, put it into a website, put it into Moodle as well. So you can embed this content into other sites. One of the reasons I like these tools is that they're so versatile. They can be used in so many different ways. Feedback, speaking, reflection, distance learning, the flipped classroom. We talk about the flipped classroom in America. When they're talking about the flipped classroom, they're talking about doing more of the learning content online so that you can spend more time in the class processing and using the language and not presenting so much. And all of these tools can be used in a flipped classroom scenario. Um, just a couple of references I've put there. You can find these on my website anyway. But if you want to read the article about the feedback, I told you that I got a lot of publicity from the feedback idea. Then um, this, you can find this article on my website. Just go to my website and go to Russell's Feedback. And you can read uh, Russell's research into feedback. You can read about the, the idea that started in 2006. But it shows you how slow these things are, is that now it's getting very popular. So there is a man in Norway, whose name is Peter Mattison, who just published a big article about using Jing for feedback in different areas of the curriculum. Not just language teaching, sociology, history, geography etc. And there's been another article in the UK just last year in The Guardian as well about this particular idea of using feedback if you're interested in those. If you go to my website, if you're interested in any of these ideas, you've got the videos for My Brain Shark, you've got the videos for Present Me, and you've got the videos for Jing. I'll quickly show you where they are. So if you want to learn any of the tools I've showed you today, you can simply go to my website, and I'll just show you.
the best place to go is to look for Russell's top 20 videos and you'll see that Jing is number one. And you'll see my brain shark is also there. If you go to Russell's recommended videos, you will also see that present me is just down below. Okay? So if you're interested in any of the things, here it is. If you're interested in any of those videos, then you can watch them. They're free to watch. If you like the idea about the feedback, then just click here and you can read all the articles, all the new newspaper publications about using video feedback as well. So please make use of that. There's also a newsletter. If you want to sign up, you can follow a newsletter as well that's on, on the website as well. So I'm going to stop there. Um, so please make use of uh, teachertrainingvideos.com if you want to. And just to finish with, um, it would be, be nice to, to answer some questions if anyone's got any questions. So can I perhaps start there, yeah? Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Would, would anyone like to ask me any questions, yeah? I think probably the best thing is if I give them, should we give them the microphone? Yeah? Okay, go ahead. I think I'm loud enough or really good. Okay. Hi, very good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I'd like to appreciate the kind of effort you put into much education with technology. Definitely goes a long way. Uh, my question is for Jing. Okay, uh, is there a maximum size limit to the, uh, the, the size of the video that you want to upload yeah. on your uh, server? Yeah, good, good question, yeah. There is a maximum size, okay, the question. Um, so what you obviously, this is their trick. Everything is free. You get two gigabytes of video space. After two gigabytes, you have to pay. Now, two things. Num two gigabytes is quite a lot. So you can do quite a lot of videos. But obviously, when you start doing too many, you can delete the videos. I showed you, just go there. You've only got three things. View the video, get the link, or delete. So you, if you get near to your limit, you can delete the videos. But remember, if you get your students using Jing, everybody will have an account. And everyone will have two gigabytes. So it's very unlikely that you'll have any problems. If you use it a lot, like I do, then yeah, I pay, I think it's, um, I think it's $20 a year or something like that for some more space. There is a limit. But it's quite generous. It's a, it's a good question. It's a really good question. And of course, they, they have, you know, all of these tools have a trick. They're trying to get you to use, um, in this case, they're trying to get you to use other technologies that they've got. But Jing as a tool is, is great, and it, you've got that limit of two gigabytes. One more thing. Yeah. Is, is Jing available for mobile applications? Right. <coughs> I think it won't. It, the, you can't make, you can't do, do a Jing on your iPhone or something. You could play your Jing back, um, but it would depend. It will depend on what applications you've got on your telephone. I think that you'll find that with iPads and iPhones, there will be a different technologies. I think there's, I think I'm guessing now. I think there's one called Screen Chump, Screen Chump that you can use on an iPad. So I don't think Jing is suitable for an, for an iPhone or an iPad. It's very much uh, uh, for a desktop application, for a PC or for a Mac. You can use it on both. All right? Thank you very much. Hi. Can we embed this on if I'm using Edmodo, yes. I don't know if you can embed into Edmodo. You can definitely put the link into Edmodo. Okay. You can share the links. Now, if Edmodo takes embed code, if it does, because I can't remember. I like Edmodo. I use it myself. But I don't think I use Edmodo. I normally share links on Edmodo. Yes, you can. So you can share a link from Present Me, a link from uh, Jing, or a link from... from um, um, my brain shock, all of them, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure, you can embed, you can definitely embed, so I don't know that, can you embed in Edmodo? Yeah. Ah, right, if you can embed in Edmodo, the answer is yes. Okay, if Edmodo takes the embed code, there is no problem. You will see when you make a recording that you always have the choice of embed or share link. So choose embed, take the code, paste it into Edmodo and it will work.
Okay, Edmodo is a fantastic tool. I really like Edmodo, and it's free, yeah? Yes, it's a really good one, yes. Good, good question, thank you. Actually, I'll check out Edmodo. I didn't realize you can embed in Edmodo. Okay, good, thank you. Hi. Hi. My Shah, mm. when you were showing how to put the comments over there so the students can see it, my only concern is that I just hope it's completely, there's complete privacy because I do not think students would like anyone to see their feedback. So are all of these yes. websites, yes. do they have complete privacy so that it's only them? Yeah, really, it's a really good question and really important. You've got two, let, let's take my brain shark. You can make, I have one account for all my students. So there is no privacy amongst them. They can see each other's work, but nobody else can see it because only my students have the password. So I have one account for my class and everybody puts their videos into the one account. If you do it that way, you have total protection from the public but no protection from the, in the students. Now, in my opinion, that's okay because I'm trying to encourage my students to leave feedback on each other's work. In fact, one of the things that I do is pair the students so that one student is looking at someone else's recording and the other student is so that they're giving feedback to each other. If you want, you could allow every single student to have their own account as well. And the only way that anyone else can see their recordings is if they make them active. If they make them active, you, when you make the recording, you have to click a button, make active. If you make active, it becomes public. If you don't make it active, nobody can see it. But the problem then is the teacher can't see it either. <laughs> so, my opinion, the way I work with my brain shock is I do one account for the whole class. Those students in that class, they know the password, they can access the account, and they can see each other's videos, but nobody from the public can see them because they don't know the password. All right, this is a really good question. It's really important. You know, this security issue is very, very important. Some students are very protective of their information and data. Of course, I tell them that whatever we put onto my brain shark should just be banal information about their lives. Don't Obviously, yeah, I mean, that's another thing to keep in mind. But it's a really good question because my brain shark, by default, nothing is public. It's the complete opposite of, of Facebook. You must activate it. Otherwise, no one can see it. So I like that. In other words, the default setting is total protection. You decide if you want to make something public on your account. Okay. All right. Um, we have a question from Twitter. Um, so, Ramik in Chandigarh would like to know, can we download the videos on our computer and see them later without an internet connection? Okay, what I can do is I have a special presentation where I've uploaded, I've uploaded the videos to um, a website. I can share that link with the British Council and then you can access them. So the answer is yes. But we'll have to do that later. If we can share, can we share out to everybody? Perhaps we can put it onto Twitter. We can share it on Twitter. So we'll right, okay. Um, no. So if you use, sorry, in that quite case, no, the answer is no. The videos that you make, for example, with Jing, if you save it onto your computer, it's in a special format and it's difficult to watch. You need a plug in. So it's always easier to upload the video onto the, onto the server and get the link. You can't physically download the recording. If you like Jing, but you want to download the recording, then you need to use it another website, a different tool. It's called Screencast-O-Matic. Screencast-O-Matic. Screencast-O-Matic works in a similar way to Jing, but you have two options. You can share the video on the server, like Jing, or you can download the video as an MP4 file. So Screencast-O-Matic is another alternative to Jing, and on my website, there are videos to show you how to use Screencast-O-Matic as well. Screencast-O-Matic is another very good tool. So if you want to download the videos, it's best to use Screencast-O-Matic, because it allows you to download your recordings. Again, you can do recordings of up to 15 minutes, 
Um, Jing only allows five minutes, so Screencast-O-Matic makes longer videos. It doesn't work quite the same way, but it allows for longer videos. It's a Screencast tool, but you can also download those videos onto your computer and therefore play them on your computer if you want to. So it's very similar to Jing, but it has that extra feature. Okay? Any, any more questions? Anyone would like to ask me anything else about my brain shark or present me or Jing? Yeah. Yeah. Microphone. My brain shark. Just a minute. No. My brain shark. My brain shark has a mobile application, so I think you can download an, a mobile application and use it on an on a smartphone. But you can't load download my brain shark onto your computer. Okay. Only on a, you can use it on a mobile phone. You can use it on a computer. But the same thing. The recordings that you created are online. In, it's, it's cloud computing cloud computing. You can't physically download the recording. You can download the PDF, but you don't get the audio. Yeah, you can download the PowerPoint with no audio, though. Okay? All right. Any more questions? Can you use Jing live streaming? What, what do you mean by can you use Jing live streaming? No, no, no. It's something that you've opened up on your screen you're co doing the video and then send it back to the students, yeah. That would be quite technically quite difficult. I mean, in theory, you could. Because remember, anything you do on the screen can be recorded, but it would be quite complicated. So in, in theory, you could do that, but it's not really made for that process. That, that's not really why it's set up. Okay? Yeah? Um, Go on. Go on. Um, this is from Hyderabad. Um, Having to correct 30 to 40 videos, wouldn't it add to the teacher's workflow? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll end up working well into our lesson plan. Definitely. Okay, obviously, this is, this, this, you know, when I, when I first come up with the video feedback idea, that was the first thing that teachers said. You know, they said, well, Russell, on small groups, it can be fantastic. But if you've got 40, 50, 60 students, but listen to what I was saying to you earlier. In the first example, I gave feedback to every student, yeah? So I was, but if you remember the second idea was that I have been teaching you today, I noticed that you've got some general problems with your vocabulary, I open up, I make one video and send it to everyone. I've been teaching you today, I've been marking your essays, I noticed there's a problem with grammar, with the present perfect. I open up Word document, I record, I do uh, some examples of the grammar point, and I do one recording and send it to everyone. I'm not suggesting that you only use Jing for feedback on an individual basis. I'm suggesting that you could do general classroom feedback. For example, if you watch my videos, you'll see on the website that I had an example. I had about 20 students. They were doing presentations. I took notes of their presentations. I went home, and I wrote out the 10 most important points. I made one video of the most important problems in the presentation lesson and sent that video to everyone. So I accept that on big classes you probably can't do this. But what you might be able to do is if you want to give general feedback to the students on vocabulary or grammar or something that's happened in the lesson, you can make one video that you send to everybody. Okay, so you're, if you go to my website you'll see that. But it's a really good point and of course it's right. If you've got really big classes, it's probably not possible. Okay? Of course, the other thing is that you could use Jing, again, the students using Jing for peer reflection, marking each other's work. There are various people experimenting with that idea as well. So lots of people doing different things with Jing. So, yes, yeah, really good question. Good. Any more questions regarding present me, Jing, or. Go on. straight to YouTube. You can do a Jing recording and directly upload to YouTube. Yeah, from Jing, not from present, not from present me and not from my brain chart, no. But from Jing, yes. Just click the button straight up onto YouTube. There is a limit to the time of the recording. 
Yes, good question, really good question, yeah. Yeah, very important. I mean, to me, that's a really important point. Jing allows for five-minute videos only, okay? But that five minutes is very important because actually in the research we've done, doing much longer than five minutes of video feedback is actually too much. It's incredible the amount of feedback you can give to students. One of the problems I had in the research, I did, I didn't really talk about the research, but is that some of the students said to me, Russell, there was just too much feedback. What I do now is I focus on four or five important points. I don't just kind of give feedback on everything. I tend to focus the feedback. Maybe I look at the grammar, maybe I look at the organisation, maybe I look at the content. I tend to focus the feedback a lot. <laughs> so that five minute limit for feedback is quite good. If you use screencast omatic, you've got a 15 minute limit. Okay, so it's longer. But again, after a while, they make you pay for more space. They've all, there's always a trick, yeah, of course, they've got to make money as a business, but I mean, it, it, they're, they're still fantastic tools. So, yes? Um, I have one question from, from Robert in Chennai. Can we edit materials using Jing? Yeah, well, Robert, you definitely can. Obviously, the thing is with Jing, right, as a tool, is that it just allows you to do the recording. You can't really do any editing. If you want to get into editing, then you really need to use a more sophisticated tool. My videos that you see on teachertrainingvideos.com, I use Camtasia. Now Camtasia is not free. Camtasia is a high-end product. But with Camtasia, you can do loads more. You can have, you know, you can have hot spots on the screen that people can click on. You can have arrows pointing at things. You can add quizzes. You can combine screencasting with video. But to develop materials with Jing is, you can do it a little bit. And there are people that have made mini grammar lessons using Jing. But if you really want to get into screencasting like I've done, then really you're going to need to use a tool like Camtasia. Camtasia. But Camtasia is not cheap. I mean, Camtasia is a good product for a school to buy, not, not for individual teachers to buy. But a school could buy Camtasia. It's about $170. But it does an enormous amount. I mean, it's a very sophisticated video tool. It allows you to do screen capture, combine it with video, etc., etc. So for basic materials development, you can use Jing, but if you want to do something more sophisticated, then you would probably need to use something like Camtasia. Oh, there are other products as well. Camtasia is just the one that I use. Okay. Any more questions? Go. Yeah, go on. Yeah, I mean, that's what you have to do. Obviously, if you've got a longer recording, I mean, if you, again, the same thing. If you use Camtasia, there's no limit. If you, you know, if, you're, if you really want to invest your money, I mean, obviously, I get Camtasia. For my videos, trainingvideos.com, some of them are 30 minutes long. So, of course, if you want to, you know, you can do lots of short videos if you want to. If you really want to get into it, my, my suggestion to you is to start to use Jing. Get, get with Jing. And then if you really think the investment is worth it, then spend the money on something like Camtasia. There are other products as well. It's just that's the one I use, but there are other products. Screencasting is very common. It's becoming very, very common. And then with the more sophisticated products, you can do much longer recordings. Okay, but you normally have to pay for those. All right. Camtasia. Camtasia. C-A-M-T-A-S-I-A. -A -A. Cam Camtasia. It's from a company called TechSmith. It's Camtasia. Any more questions? I have one last question. Go on then. Um, this is from Delhi. Uh, how many webcam users can there be on Presenty? Only one. Yeah, really good question. Really good, because that would be fantastic. No, you can just have the one webcam. So you have the one webcam with two people sitting together, for example. But you can only have one webcam working at any time. Okay, so it doesn't take more than that. Thank you very much, Russell. All right, cheers. Thank you very much. Thank for you. Anyone, Thank if you. you want to ask questions, you Please, yeah. For a little while. Yeah. Uh, for our audiences in other um, offices, he's available on Twitter. I yep, I am. That's no, okay. <laughs> to answer your questions as well. Um, please, if you're interested uh, in more ELT uh, research um, in other events that we're doing, uh, you can have a look at the British Council India website. There's lots of information about upcoming events. 
um, about awards for teachers, for classroom research, and also about our directory of ELT research that we're working on at the moment. Um, on the shelves over here, there's a selection of the books from my library, so the British Council Library, um, and have a special section for ELT professionals like yourselves. So please feel free to have a look and help yourselves to snacks. Thank you very much, and thank you, Russell. Cheers, thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers.